It's fair to say that the world of comic books and video games go pretty much hand in hand. Ever since video game developers starting acquiring rights to turn the pages of comic books into action-packed video games, fans have loved seeing game versions of their favourite superheroes and comic book characters. The Nintendo 64 was no exception, and what will most likely surprise you with this video is just how many video games on the console there really were that had their roots based on comic books. Sure, the big ones from DC and Marvel will always spring to mind, but the Nintendo 64 had some exceptional titles from lesser known comic book companies. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look at the console games from comic book origins. And as always, if you want a more detailed review of any of the titles featured on this list, then head down to the video description where I'll leave links to them. Our Marines was a 1999 first person shooter coming from acclaimed London studio and is based off the Valiant comic of the same name. Whilst it was a multi-platform release, the Nintendo 64 version is probably the best one to play, but reviews of the time were far from positive about this experience. The story sees you choose one of two characters who are futuristic marines and basically you're doing the dirty work of the United States in the name of freedom. This involves taking out an alien invasion and it was perhaps IGN who best summed up the game as Turok 2 with bugs crossed in with Starship Troopers. There are some cool features like a two player co-op mode and some missions switch up to the first person action and then switch it over to some on rail sections with some serious firepower. This is perhaps one of the most frustrating games on this list because the story, gameplay, concept and ideas of the developer, they are all great. It's just the execution was just so mixed. It seems that the ideas like the point based system and promotion was half baked and the arsenal of weapons you have is nowhere near as fun as the Turok series. The enemies are nicely designed and animated well but the slow frame rate with or without the expansion pack makes it challenging for all the wrong reasons. It seems that the Turok 2 engine the game runs off was pushed well past its limits and what you end up with is a game which sounds great, looks okay and plays poorly. If you can overlook these problems then you will find a great storyline here and fans of the comic would be begging for a HD remaster of this. I mean come on Night Dive Studios, this one's just asking to be remastered. Perhaps the most recognisable comic book character of all time and one which I know many of you love is Spider-Man. The Nintendo 64 game is fantastic, it's as simple as that. Developed by Edge of Reality and published by Activision, What's most surprising about this game was that it was built on the Tony Hawk Pro Skater engine. Spider-Man has been set up by a lookalike for stealing a device from Dr. Octavius, who is apparently a reformed person in this game. But the developers dealt some massive fan service by throwing in Venom, Carnage, Scorpion, Rhino and Doc Ock to the game's storyline, as well as giving us lots of costumes to play as, some of which have special abilities. Whereas the CD based versions of the game have video sequences, the Nintendo 64 version has cutscenes in a comic book style which I personally preferred for a change, as this made it feel like you're really playing an interactive comic book. It's not just fans of the comic that get some great fan service. Some of the voice actors from the 90s animated TV series reprise their roles and even Stanley himself lends his vocal pipes to help narrate parts of the story. Tommy Tallarico composed the soundtrack, you have expansion pack support which is one of the few games to make great use of it, and some visuals which do push the console's limits. No surprise then, at the time of the game's release many pundits called this the best Spider-Man game ever made, and until the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man, I'd have said that this is a Spider-Man experience that was never going to be surpassed. This is a prime example of how to do not only a great comic book game, but a great video game altogether. Every N64 owner should have this one in their collections. Turok Dinosaur Hunter is perhaps one of the single biggest reasons why many people decided to pick up a Nintendo 64 console along with Mario 64 in the early days of the system's release. Developed by Iguana Entertainment and published by Acclaim in 1997, you take on the role of Talset, the Native American time-travelling warrior. Originally the comics were made by Western Publishing in the 1950s, but Valiant Comics revised the series as we know it in 1993. The plot involves Turok, which is a name passed down through generations to the oldest male, who is charged with protecting the barrier between the Earth and the Lost Land. The Lost Land is a place where aliens and dinosaurs and other monsters exist, and time has no meaning. 
An overlord called the Campaigner seeks an ancient artifact called the Chronoceptor, which will grant him the power to destroy the barriers between the universe and time within. The video game is loosely based on the comics with some artistic license thrown in to help make the game much more action orientated. Fans of the comic will no doubt have been happy to see the story come to life and many sequels followed in varying success including Turok 2, Turok 3 and Rage Wars. To save padding out this list with too much from the Turok series, I'll only be showing this first game here, but who knows, maybe one day Slope's Game Room will do a complete history of the Turok universe for us all to enjoy. The game was a critical and a commercial success. So much so, in fact, that pre-orders exceeded expectations across most retailers, and the anticipation for the game's release reached fever pitch when the share price for Acclaim went from under a dollar to nearly six on the back of all the positive media coverage. I'm sure you've all played this before, but if you also want to check out the Night Dive Studios remaster, it's available on Steam or Xbox One, and it includes options like being able to have twin stick movement and aiming, or of course mouse and keyboard support. Batman Beyond Return of the Joker was a multi-platform scrolling beat-em-up coming from Chemco and published by Ubisoft in the year 2000. Batman Beyond has its fans, but for me, I much personally preferred Bruce Wayne as Batman. The game sees you take on the role of Terry McGuinness and is based on the comic, television series and movie universe of the same name. The game received pretty much, well, negative reviews on its release, and I can see why, but at the same time I don't quite think it's as bad as everybody makes out. The biggest problem with the game is it's fairly short and the gameplay was outdated by the time of the release, and this meant that the visuals also made many people compare this to a late Super Nintendo release. It's also only a single player experience which was a big letdown for anyone like myself who loved side-scrolling beat-em-ups in co-op mode. On a plus point, there are different suits to equip Batman with and you can also change your abilities because there are some cool weapons to master as well. The enemy's AI is very, very poor and there are many occasions where you can literally place yourself next to them and start hitting them without them taking the initiative and attacking you first. It becomes fairly repetitive even in the short length of the game and overall it is a game which you could quite easily polish off in a sitting or two over a weekend rental back in the day. Okay, so I'm biased, but personally Shadow Man is the coolest comic book character ever. And so when a video game based on the comic book from Valiant was released, it was a day one pick up for me. But hey, I'm not the only one who loved the comics. In the second year of the comics release, it had a six figure reader base each month and it was beating some of the Marvel and DC stalwarts in popularity and sales. When Acclaim picked up the Valiant rights, Shadow Man went under a reimagining of sorts, and many fans refer to this as the Second Coming, and that's not to be confused with the god-awful sequel called Second Coming on PlayStation 2. The series went from a more sci-fi feel to that of an occult one. It became darker in tone and due to the video game, it's often considered to be the best Shadow Man iteration in character. If you like mature video games with a dark tone and a metroidvania style experience then Shadow Man is definitely for you. Be warned however, the game doesn't hold your hand and exploration can at times be complex and frustrating, which is why I feel the game doesn't get the praise it rightly deserves these days. The game and comics also have celebrity fans. Ice Cube of all people loved it so much so that in 1999 he was in talks with a claim to acquire the rights to make a feature length film. Those talks didn't go anywhere, but in 2017 it was reported that a movie is in the works and a script is being written for a feature length adaptation. There's been little updates since last year, but those of us who love Shadow Man will wait with bated breath for further information around this. For anyone else, I made a documentary around the real life serial killer links to Shadow Man's game characters, and so if you're interested in that, go to the video description and you'll find out a little bit more and we can discuss about how those characters do have connections to real life serial killers. The horror, the horror, I embrace it. Superman 64 is the worst comic book game of all time. It's also the worst video game ever made in some people's opinions, and it's been mocked, ridiculed, brayed so much so over the years that there's really nothing left to say about it. Yes, it contains Superman, but handle this one like kryptonite, because you don't want it anywhere near your gaming collection. Just avoid this one at all costs. And so there you have it. There's a roundup of the console's games with comic book links and...
OK OK, whilst not directly linked to a comic, I couldn't help but throw in this added bonus game into the list. Star Wars Shadows of the Empire was a concept from the mid-90s that was to create a story set between the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. The plan was to explore this as a purely commercial venture, exploiting all media forms without actually making a new movie, and thus the graphic novel was born. This also led to the creation of comics and also the video game which many of us will know and love. Star Wars Shadows of the Empire was part of the deal between LucasArts and Nintendo which meant that they would create an exclusive set of games available only on Nintendo 64 and also on PC. This was to avoid the game showing up on the rival PlayStation and it was a big win for Nintendo early on. The game sold over 1 million copies in 1997 and the game takes a range of styles from racing, dogfighting and most memorably the third person action stages. I personally love this game on both PC and Nintendo 64, and yes there are some frustrating moments, but when you consider how early this was in the console's lifespan, you can't help but appreciate how cool it was to get this at the time. I loved how the story interlinked with the events of the movies, and although I didn't personally take to Dash Rendar all that much, it was nice to see him be welcomed back into Star Wars canon after so many years. Personally these days though, you probably want to play the PC version from good old games in Mac settings with better controls than the N64 version. So as a whole the console did get quite a few comic book linked games including many which I don't think you will have realised had their roots in comic book lore. And so for today's topic of conversation, I'd love to know what you think the best one on the list was and also which, if any of these games, you'd like to see a remaster of. As always sound off in the comment section below and until next time.